Indeed we do. We'll move away from that story to bring updates regarding uh, the statement that President Tinubu made. President Bola Tinubu has made a public condemnation of actions of kidnappers nationwide, attributing their wicked acts to that of terrorists. During a Ramadan dinner attended by members of the federal judiciary, including the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayo Diariwola, the president gave a direct response to what Islamic scholar had said earlier in the week, that kidnappers should be called for negotiations. Nobody wants arms or any danger on the earth or her backyard. And no listener leader will want to mortgage the future of that children. We are working hard. Yes, the bandits just please uphold our that resolve when we say kidnappers are terrorists and don't rule really against us. That is the way we pursue them. That is the way we must treat them. Child kidnappers as cowards lacking the ability to stand up to the Nigerian armed forces uh, might. Now, this follows the recent Skuriga kidnapping of students, the abduction of Ondo State in Ondo State and in Joss Plato State. Joining us to discuss the insecurity crisis in the is the retired director of the Department of State Service and Security expert, Mr. Dennis Amarkri. Mr. Dennis, you're welcome. Good to have you here. Good morning. Thank you very much. Grand. Now, Mr. Dennis, regarding the uh, reference of abductors as terrorists, uh, first off, let's clear that out. How do you feel about this? Do you think that that is fair enough to re regard them as terrorists? Um, well, thank you. Um, this has been done before. This has been done already. Because you remember that when we wanted to buy the Tokano jets, it was uh, um, uh, uh, refused in the second, second instance that uh, the, the Americans don't want to sell it to us because they feel we are going to use it on civilian population. Because the bandits are classified as civilians. And of course, um, they cannot be called uh, bandits and then we sell them because we wanted to fight the bandits at that time. Somebody went to court. I think the federal government went to court the high court and it was they were now de de declared as terrorists so bandits or kidnappers are all terrorists when we talk about kidnappers being called uh, being treated as terrorists what kidnapping is it's only for somebody who have not experienced it because kidnapping is a trauma it's a trauma. There's a lady that was kidnapped. She came from the United States to visit Nigeria with her daughter and husband. And, you know, they were traveling and they were kidnapped. And gory story. That lady has decided never to come back to Nigeria again mm. because of what happened to her in front of her. You know, they wanted to rape the daughter. She said, instead of raping the daughter, rape me. And they went and did it before her husband. That is terror. That's sheer terror. So kidnappers are terrorists. Before they don't used to kill, but now they kill. And you've right. seen the videos, you know, that goes around uh, about how they were treating school children or how they were beating up their, you know, hostages. So it's proper. I agree with the president. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Macri, for set, um, sharing your point with us. You've said, and you agree with the president, who has said that kidnappers should be treated as terrorists. And uh, Sheikh Gumi, we've been following the news to see how he has, uh, in many cases, said that we should negotiate with these people. And he's been recently invited for a meeting. And from the reports of the meeting, he did say that there was no animosity, it was a curtsy you know, visit of, to some extent and that, you know, they discussed how to end banditry. Talk to us about your thoughts on Sheikh Bumi and the influence he seemingly has in Nigeria, especially regarding conversations surrounding terrorism. Well, one thing about Sheikh Bumi is that I think he's one uh, uh, cleric that uh, seeks attention. And uh, of course, he does not watch what he says. 
And then, of course, he felt, he feels that he's a sacred cow. He feels that he's a sacred cow. I think what has just happened by him being invited is to bust his bubble, to show him that, look, you can be touched. You can be touched. Mm. And, of course, his spokesman is already in court for, ter for terrorism financing. And that's why he was saying that, oh, the man should uh, be released. And, of course, the man was bold enough to say that um, the federal government should apologize to him or I think he was taking them to court or something like that. You know, terrorism financiers are worse than terrorists. And then, of course, those who support them are terrorists. So for him, I think he better watch his back because um, they've talked to him. He must have gone there and, you know, uh, uh, claimed that he was trying to help and stuff like that. But if more facts emerge about his activities, I think he has to go in for it. But do you think that anything will come out of this uh, invitation? But because from what he's saying, it's not looking like there's going to be any arrests made. He's saying they had a conversation mm -hmm. about how to end banditry in Nigeria. And from you know all indications, a number of security experts who have come on the show, we had one yesterday, and he said clearly that every administration knows those who, maybe not all, but majority of those who are financing and sponsoring terrorism, and those who are encouraging it as well. So will anything come out from the list, the list of 15 ter terrorist financiers that were, was released? Will anything come from inviting Sheikh Gumi? Or is it just business as usual, or like they like to say in Nigeria, I service? No, it's not I service. One thing we have to understand is that when the security agencies invite you, it is not necessarily to detain you. Because I think what Nigerians, some Nigerians were thinking is that, oh, we should detain him, you know, keep him there and then teach him a lesson. No. Security agencies or even the police can invite you to their office in the process of investigation because they are investigating something and then they find that you are an interested party. They can invite you and then, of course, interview you. Interview is not interrogation. And okay. interrogation is not arrest. So now, we have to be very, very clear about Mr. this. Macri. Many, of, many people in the public are not aware of this. Let's talk about the Kaduna yes. instance, uh, sir. Uh, so regarding the Kaduna instance, the reunited, uh, re, uh, the, the, the students getting back to their families and all, um, it's something to celebrate grand. We uh, enjoy the fact that they have been rescued, whatever the case, however they were rescued. But regarding the fact that we are being kept away from most of the information regarding these rescue operations, do you think that there is It was almost um, a rumor or mere speculation, speculation when the military I am also, announced... I am also waiting for the details of how these girls were released. You know, is it a rescue? Is it a release? If it's a release, that means they just give them away to the security agents. Take, we don't want again, right? But remember, taking this number of children into the desert or wherever, in the Sahel, and then move them from Kaduna State to Zamfara State, there are so many things that need to be found out. One of them is how were they moved? Was there a lorry taking them around? Was there a, a kind of uh, transportation? Were they moving by foot? And look at them. Kids like this cannot be moving, you know, all the way from Kaduna State to Zamfara State by, by foot in the bush so that is something that the security agencies will tell us because right now i'm sure they are talking to them they are debriefing them and they will tell them a lot you know so um let's wait for the end of that investigation great um i, I mean you've highlighted very key areas key points as well that have given us concern 
Zamfara back to Kaduna is a 10 hour journey. So it's, um, it's, it's you know, mind blowing to, to think how these children navigated this journey without being spotted at any point. Mm. Still talking about the uh, Kaduna rescue. Uh, the numbers that were initially released were two, was 287 at the time that mm. this was announced. But at the time of rescuing these children, we hear that it's 137 and that there was an error on the part of the media. What are your thoughts on how this was handled? Shouldn't this have maybe been announced at the point where it became news, at the point where the kidnap had happened, maybe a day or two after, not at the point of rescuing these kids? I agree with you. As an investigator myself, those are the questions that I want to ask. How can you come out and announce 285 or 87 people being kidnapped? Don't they have a register of the students in that school? And then, of course, the governor might have not have been well briefed because the governor came in there and also supported that number of people that had been taken away. And then, when they returned, only 137 were returned. And they say this is the total number. In fact, they said it was 137. It was one of the girls who said that actually it's 138 because uh, one of their teachers was killed. He died. So the numbers are not adding up. We need to know that. You know, we need to know that. And it's very, very important that they tell us, they tell Nigerians exactly what happened. No, because it's very, very, you know, uh, uh, important where maybe some, if the number is not correct, we might later see some parents coming around to ask where are their own children. Remember the Chibo girls? Same thing. You know, when they released them, not all of them were released till today. So let's not do politics. Let's not mix this security situation with politics whereby you are trying to gain some kind of uh, uh, favorite, favorite image or rushing to say, oh, we release them in uh, record time and stuff like that. Because what are you doing at the same time? You are giving impetus to those kidnappers whom the president have declared as terrorists. And then, of course, he has said that there should be no ransom payment. So whichever way, I think it is very, very important that we get our facts straight. So, Mr. Macri, the president has said that, yes, yes, we refer to them as terrorists, but let's talk about the modus operandi of the security forces onward from now. Um, regarding the formation of a special corps to help marshal students, uh, education basically in uh, the north, um, and at a time where Nigeria is also calling for state policing in Nigeria, uh, the there's a certain question here whether the police is not capable enough to secure um, students uh, in these parts of the country and whether we absolutely need a totally different court to be able to do that. What are your takes on this? Now, you know, we have been advocating for state police and uh, I'm one of the, you know, foremost proponents of that. You know, we've been advocating. In fact, we were talking about state police when this particular government was in the opposition party you know because and they supported it i remember the advisor to the lagos state security advisor to the lagos state governor at that time and uh, by that time uh, ac or ac ac uh, uh, the present government actually uh, was was in the opposition and they were supporting state police. Now, when they got into government, um, I think um, we, we, we don't hear much about it until recently. I think everybody is now pushing for it, and I think they have to go to the National Assembly to make the necessary adjustments. And I hope it comes to light. Because when you look at Nigeria, uh, we have these uh, non-state actors most likely from foreign countries who came into this country, occupied the forest area, the desert areas or wherever, where um, the government presence is not effective or is not known. 
There are 774 local governments in Nigeria. And these government, uh, local government areas have supposed to have a DPO and even uh, a DSS, uh, NSDC people, all of them around that area. But now when you look at it, you find out that these local governments have been attacked in so many times. And most of them are in very rural areas. Maybe the, 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 um, the, the, the terrorists were attacking some villages where the, um, the, the local government chairman or somebody is not around. But it's such a vast area and they have occupied what we now refer to as ungoverned spaces. Ungoverned in the sense that there is no law enforcement, there is nothing there. And they come there, they do what they want to do and they go away. So if we have state police, state police will be restricted to their area. There will be because crime is committed in a locality and they will be able to respond. Response is one of the most important things. And then of course, besides response, they would have been trained. Trained, state police would have been trained with special intervention squad tactics. I hope the one that the IGP is now pro, uh, you know, putting together, you know, are well trained because it's training that makes the difference then we don't need any military in fact we don't because military are not trained to deal with civilians in a reconciliatory manner or peacekeeping or uh, you know within their own country no they should allow police to do that if we feel that the police is not well equipped then we have to raise their capabilities and their capacity so there's still so much to the number of policemen in our country. So there's still so much to unpack regarding the Kaduna instance when it comes to security, regarding the fact that these students were moved from one place to the other of great distance. Um, but let's ask the question that people are, well, not too uh, comfortable asking. Um, do you think, in your capacity, do you think that the entire situation was staged? Do you think that there was a ransom paid to be able to secure these students back to their families let's answer that question what do you think that is a million dollar question it's a million dollar question in the sense that let me put it like this you know i have been involved in kidnap uh, and release process many of them when i was working for a private company when our 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 expatriates were kidnapped in the niger delta in those days you know and then, of course, we have negotiators who will come and then we negotiate with the terrorists at that time, militants, of course, at the, that's what they call them at that time. And then, of course, they will go ahead and uh, either um, release them or take some kind of ransom, which we will either negotiate downwards, you know, and then, of course, uh, at the end of the day, in fact, if we negotiate very well and then uh, give them some good reasons, what happens is that they will say, okay, fine. But we've been keeping this man for a month now. So uh, we've been feeding him and we bought medicine for him. And, you know, we transported him. So we needed money to cover those expenses. Okay, fine. We'll give you. Okay. I don't know whether that's the same thing that happened with the uh, Koriga students. Because there is no way, and that's why we are still having the controversy of whether it is a release or a rescue. If it's a release, then there must be some kind of compromise between the Nigerian uh, military and those boys, whereby they say, okay, we agree on this and take you know and of course we don't even know whether the number is complete so it, it might be kept just like the chief of girls they might keep that for a later day a later day negotiation but if it's a rescue that means they went in there they survey the place and then of course they extract the 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 the, the students you know uh, tactically 
and then of course dealt with the uh, uh, terrorists because we don't hear of any any terrorist that was killed we don't hear of any um, uh, fire fireworks or even the military we don't hear of any military person that was killed on both sides you know and then of course the next day we saw somebody who was flaunting uh, bundles of uh, naira in um, in uh, in uh, on on TikTok. So uh -huh. I'm glad you, I didn't you even mention one plus one. Uh, what you are going to get? Uh, the answer is with you. I'm glad that you've mentioned that the bandits uh, brandishing cash on social media. There was a report by the Vanguard newspaper about six thousand nine hundred and thirty-one Nigerians who have been uh, they killed. Yes, I just wanted to confirm the number: six hundred nine hundred six thousand nine hundred and thirty-one Nigerians. Killed. It was a March 23, 2024 edition of the paper that stated that this has happened under Tinubu's time. Over 17,000 Nigerians from 2019 to date. Of course, the bulk of that number happening under President Muhammad Buhari's uh, tenure. What are your thoughts on the current administration and how it has handled insecurity so far? Would you say that it's doing a better or a worse job, even though the last administration is not the yardstick to determine? how insecurity should be handled. But would you say that the current administration is doing a much better job or a much worse job? Um, I think um, right now the present president is doing better. Better in the sense that we don't have to be guest workers or prophets to be reading the body language of our president. You know, when our soldiers were killed yesterday, he was right there. He was right there. That presence alone is, means a, a lot to people. It shows that the president cares. But the other administration, we were having a, a president who does not say anything. You know, people were reading his body languages. Uh, some of his uh, subordinates uh, or his aides were coming out and telling Nigerians different kinds of story. In fact, he was not he was not uh, managing the situation very well, you know. So I would say that the present president did a very good job. He's doing a good job. All right, uh, Mr. Matri, uh, thank you very much for sharing that. A number of Nigerians would feel, you know, feel greatly disappointed. And I, mean, I know you're saying he's doing a great job, but it just feels like there's a lot happening back to back. Maybe it's why we're feeling the impact of insecurity worse now than we did in past administrations. Uh, also talking about, as we wrap up, as quickly as possible, what is it about uh, the North, especially Kaduna, that makes it some form of a subject of these incessant attacks? Yesterday, the Borno State Governor said they've been able to conquer insecurity. Uh, what is it about the Kaduna state government, or the Kaduna state uh, as, a, as, a, as a state rather, that makes it very easy for them to be targets? Uh, well, you know, I have been worried about one particular point, and that is the mixture of security and politics. Security and politics. We've brought in, you know, non-state actors into this country. And these non-state actors have occupied the ungoverned spaces of Kaduna State. In fact, there was a time a former governor of that state was actually giving them stipends. He came out to say it himself, that he was giving them stipends so that they will not attack anybody. After a while, he decided that he's not going to give them again. And they said, okay, if you don't give us again, then we're going to attack all your schools. Nobody will go to school. In fact, there are children in, that, in those schools and they are not going to go to school. And you remember, all the schools in Kaduna State were closed down. And they go ahead and they, they, were, they were hitting at even the NDA. Because the military establishment in this country have a lot of facilities in that state. And they were doing all this up to the extent where the governor have to come out and say, oh, why can't we go and carpet bomb them? That was his exact words. Carpet bomb them. Now you are going to carpet bomb people. Then that means the collateral damage is going to be very high. And that might even, you know, give us a very bad uh, reputational risk where International Court of 
justice could come in and say, oh, we are committing war crimes. So, Kaduna State has its own problems, which are mixed with security and politics. Oh. And I think, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's, that's where you can select it out. Mr. Dene Samatri, thank you very much for your time with us this morning. We hope that uh, we have positive news regarding Nigeria's fight against insecurity in the nearest future. Thank you very much for having me.